quite that we're beyond that. I have two days ago. Good morning. Let's uh, stand for the pledge in a moment of silence, please. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Commissioner Robbins? Here. Commissioner Rushton? Present. Commissioner Bailey? Here. Chairman Wessel? Here. Commissioner Sotis Little? Here. Commissioner Algeyer? Here. Commissioner Lautner? Present. Thank you. It seems like we've just got, got out of here. <laughs> Thank you for coming today. Uh, uh, we have a, a special meeting uh, with two items on the agenda, but we uh, at this time would love to hear public comment if anybody would like to make it. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Jennifer Grant. I want to start out by saying I have the privilege of starting the week out this week at the UCOA conference that focused on professional development and leadership with Jennifer Ritter from the Grow Professional Development Group and Carly Crager from the MSU Extension. One thing that I focused, that it focused on was we can help our employees in our offices that are struggling. I could go into great detail but ultimately come alongside the employee and ask questions like, how can I help you make your job easier? How can I make you understand this task better and listen and work together and make those changes. Another thing that was explored is there is an ultimate goal everyone is working towards. How I get to that goal, goal may be different than how the next person gets to that goal. Doesn't mean my way is right or wrong or their way is right or wrong, but we have the ultimate goal in the end. Some things I learned were refresher and I was able to bring some things back that I want to use in my office. In this situation of deciding to transfer duties from the administrator to the clerk, I think the ultimate goal is to make our human resource and finance department successful. I think these two departments are necessary in an organization as large as this. And I think there was a level of comfort brought to most of the employees since the creation of these two departments. On Wednesday, you were fortunate enough to hear from Jerry and Christine and the ladies that used to be in the accounting, and they all want to strive for the ultimate goal of these departments' success. I felt a lot of emotions. The things I heard from listening to Wednesday's meeting is they need help, they want to work together, they need the information to do the job, they need access to the tools to do their jobs. Please listen to these employees, your key players. Come alongside them and give them the tools they need, and most importantly, they are capable of doing their job with collaboration and the right tools. The circumstances that this all took place probably wasn't the best way to handle things. I'm guessing someone listened to an employee or an employee who <coughs> said there needed to be a change for the betterment of the employee and the county. I do know this is the first time the board listened and took action without the knowledge of an elected official. In 2019, the board cut a half time employee in the Register of Deeds office without the knowledge of the elected official, and the elected official was not consulted or asked what the needs of the office were. This idea came from somewhere. Minds were already made up and the elected official tried to fight not to lose the employee. When I took office, I had to continue to fight to get this employee back. I thought, how can I create a better working relationship with the board so they feel comfortable asking my opinion and needs on the things that affect my office and not take the ideas of others that know nothing about my office? My first step was to invite you all in and see what we do. Meet the employees, see how busy we are. I am still thankful for those that did come in and learn about our office. I had a nice conversation at the time with Ty and told him some of the things, some of the exact things about listening and talking to your employees. See what they need to be successful. Ty invited the employees to come in today and give public comment and subsequently took time yesterday for those that wanted to privately meet with him. Thank you for hearing me, Ty. I heard Jared indicate that John's plan 
he likes John's plan and how his office will work to get him where they need to be, the ultimate goal. The treasurer's plan to come alongside the employees gives them benchmarks and gets them the tools they need to be successful. I could hear a level of comfort coming from his voice with this plan. I was unclear to how the clerk's proposal and how her department will come alongside the employees to help them to get the information that is being asked for. Maybe today there's being a new plan is being presented. I don't know that. I know not, I have known the clerk for 30 plus or minus years. I admire her years of service to the people of our county. I'm not a fan of how things took place, but it's in the past and we have to move forward to reach the ultimate goal. I appreciate of all of you on this board and your willingness to serve the public. The tough decisions you have to make aren't always popular with everyone. There is always going to be someone that isn't going to be happy. It's a tough job. You heard your key players tell you exactly what will work for them to be successful. Collaboration, communication, tools, access to the important information they need, and, and most importantly, the work as a team. So the ultimate goal can be reached for the betterment of the whole county. Thank you again for asking for feedback, listening, and for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, Chairman. I'm not sure that um, it's being live streamed currently. I don't know whether you want to stop and wait till that's addressed or. You're not sure what? I'm not sure that the live stream for YouTube okay. is working. Let's, let's take just a quick break uh, and see how we can fix that. Because <coughs> uh, that is what the employees just told me. Okay. Uh, anybody else like to make public comment? Yes. <coughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Board of Commissioners, for providing me the opportunity to speak today. I'm a constituent of District 2. My name is Kira Davis. I'm a charitable citizen of Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians, and I sit on the G2B's Natural Resource Environmental Committee as an elected official. Ms. Rushton, miigwech. Thank you for acknowledging the treatment of staff in Wednesday's meeting. I would also like to include Ms. Cracker, as I've heard in the community as well that she was notified of changes abruptly. I definitely do my research. Um, regardless, this is all in the past. As a tribal citizen, a person who believes our traditions should look seven generations to come, with this in mind, I'm worried about our county's government. I was in shell shock to learn you have now established, just now, separation of power, checks and balances, and a county's government, where we, the people, entrust you. Thank you for starting the process. And please take a chance to look at your neighboring counties, your tribal governments, your state government. It's a bit shocking that we did not have a finance and a human resource department 40 years ago. It came in seeing staff that truly are wanting to work and do their jobs in a place where we can't find housing and there's a staffing crisis. Please look just one generation ahead. Look weeks ahead. How long are these people going to tolerate this type of environment without structure, checks and balances, and training? We came in here hearing this is all about training. One plan was provided, one proposal as the plan wasn't asked for by the clerk, with all due respect. But this provided a proposal which gave a lot of power to one person. All of a sudden, the meeting turned into who holds the power to hire and fire. I am flabbergasted that this was not already in the hands of human resources or the administrator. Never have I heard of a clerk having that power. And please, public and commissioners, just Google these jobs and see what they're supposed to do in county governments. What is the process for hiring and firing? Is this established? Or is this something that also still needs to be done in 2022? It feels like the cart got put before the horse and the staff are the ones feeling the impact. I support my county as I do my tribal community. And what I have witnessed has left me confused and what the true issue is here. If you are making decisions today with the thought of how these actions will affect people up tomorrow, then we really need to look at how this process goes. I apologize to all of you that change is hard. 
I know about change. I'm a tribal person. I know about change in this county. I'll leave it there. But there's a need for much needed change and how we treat each other and how we move forward that will be most effective for all that live in this county today and tomorrow. Without those people, without just structure, you may be in trouble. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Mikowski. Good morning. <clears throat> the way things appear to me, we've attended a couple thousand meetings of county and township governments in the last three or four years. The issue, the apparent dirty politics in the local county government, disrupting the whole ability, the opportunity. We don't want to go back. We all want to go forward. We don't want to look back. We don't want to learn from the tip of the deal. The healing apology is necessary. Commissioners must provide the clerk and the task for the action we've taken on May 11th, 2021. At that time, it appears that four Republican county commissioners, narcissistic egos, initiated the removal of the finance and human resource duties from Republican. After a Republican commissioner recall, this clerk voting continued. And it was a, continued to be approved by the Democrats also. The clerk voting scheme was initiated in the absence of any reports demonstrating the necessity of the application community. The scheme apparently was further advanced when a treasurer initiated an investigation of the clerk by the state police, but seeming support from other elected officials. All of this seemingly planned to occur in the clerks busiest, most demanding time in elections all the world. Maybe commissioners deem such conduct and behavior as charitable. May the Almighty help us if the next commission continues such harmful motive suffering. <clears throat> Perhaps commissioners feel that their actions through this process were decent, ethical, good, honest, Honorable, just more righteous. Or perhaps the material conduct as, as described as bad, dark, evil, immoral, rotten, unrighteous, sin, unrighteous. I don't know. For me and many others, unless more information is presented by the board commissioners, simply using words such as fraud and malfeasance, may describe the harm and damage being done to the well-being of the common clerk, taxpayers, and the staff. That's an appropriate term, perhaps. Will this Board of Commissioners require the union minister to continue this clerk-loving process? The Board of Commissioners saving grace is an immediate, sincere apology for the clerk and taxpayers such action may provide the returning to carry the ministry in a more positive sense. Hopefully, in 2023, 2024, point commissioners will adopt a more honest paradigm and halt and halt the clerk removing sloppy governance of the solution. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, public comment? Yes, Laura. I purposely didn't speak during Wednesday's meeting. However, I want to thank all of you for encouraging us to come forward with our thoughts and our 
here. Uh, I fully support the current structure of the separate finance and HR departments. And I would encourage you also to please approve the treasurer's plan, which was well thought out and embraces a more team-like approach. We need positive leadership to guide our new employees forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? And then you, Trudy. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. I'm Karen Josie, who's been in township. I wasn't going to come out and speak this morning, uh, but I actually feel quite emotional. As a past county employee for the Oakland County, an employee at the Bradenton Hills um, government, I feel for the employees who have had the courage to come up and speak. It is tough to work under a circumstance where you just feel like you could, you could be doing a better job. And I just want, I don't know, I wish I knew all the employees, I don't, but I just want to give you all a pat on the back and say thank you for your courage, no matter what, how you felt about it. I think it's really important for everyone to hear. Um, but again, as a former employee, governmental employee, um, I do believe that good business practices require uh, a separate finance department and HR department from the clerk's office. The clerk's office is way too busy for more responsibility. So again, thank you for, I wish this had taken so all darn long, uh, but um, I'm happy to see uh, the results of what's happened. So thank you for all, all of that. Thank you. Yes, Trudy. Morning. Morning. I wanted to just make a few comments on your item number one today. When I started here a few years ago, <laughs> um, I had many projects that I had to do, and of course there was a big learning curve. And I remember after one year talking to an employee in the Jason office and saying, I'm so frustrated. That there was so much to learn. And I've been here a year already, and she told me, give it time. You're learning every single day, and you don't understand how much you have already learned, but one of these days it's just going to click, and everything's going to be great. And she was great. Uh, you have a dilemma today, two proposals in front of you. If you remove the stipend one and just look at the proposals, you have what I'm going to call a team approach, um, an approach to work together across different offices, try to get this resolved. And um, then you have an approach which shifts these current positions, these new positions, under an elected official with supervisory and disciplinary action. What's best for the new employees? What do they need? When I started, I needed guidance and I needed direction. And I firmly believe that those two things empower the employees to learn their position, to understand their role, and to just become better employees as they move forward. And I think that is just really, really important. I have boss that did a good job training me, gave me that guidance, that direction, explained my role, but also gave me the freedom to, um, you know, make some mistakes and learn from those mistakes as well. And I think it worked out pretty well because eventually it clicked and I was off and running. With regard to the stipend, um, that's your choice. What I would respectfully request is that you look at this fairly across the board. You have offices who have been doing tasks and have taken on tasks and tasks from other offices over the years. And I cannot think of any times where there's been additional pay or stipends that have been discussed. So I would ask that you look at that in respect to all of those situations and all of those departments who are handling other work. Many of them are, um, or I should say many, some of them are not elected officials who are not going to sit here and say, I'll do the work, but it will come at this price and under these terms. They're, they're not elected. You direct us to do something and we tell you, okay, uh, what's the timeline? We need it done. So I would just ask that with regard to stipends, um, you look at that fairly across the board. <coughs> While this issue may not impact my office directly, it does affect all of us in this building. And I hope that you can come together for a solution that's best for the new employees, mm -hmm. and works, and we can just move forward. I am also supportive of both of these new departments. I want to make sure that I say that before I finish. I'm supportive of both of these new departments. 
I happened to be one of the employees that was here when we had a finance director years ago, and I felt it worked pretty well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, public comment? Yes, Darcy. Darcy Weaver, um, thank you for just considering the plan to train and provide the tools necessary for the finance director and accounting staff to be successful. Single greatest achievement any company can get is organizational health. An organization has integrity, is healthy, when it's whole, consistent, and complete. When its management, operations, strategies, and culture fit together and make sense. A healthy organization has minimal politics and confusion, high degrees of morale and productivity, and a very low turnover among its employees. An organization that is healthy will inevitably get smarter over time. When leaders of an organization are less than honest with one another, when they put the needs of their department or careers ahead of the needs of the greater organization, when they are misaligned, confused, and inconsistent about what's important, they create real anguish for real human beings. And they experience that anguish themselves. And that's what we have here. You have been presented with a proposal from the clerk and a plan from the treasurer. One speaks of stipends and demands, while the other addresses unity and teamwork. When considering how to move forward with the training for the finance director and accounting staff, I would ask you to approve a plan that would involve everyone. This can happen if we build a comprehensive leadership team who is responsible for achieving the common objective that we're after. And if we create clarity so we understand the goals and responsibility and have clear goals and strategies to obtain that goal. And then we need to over communicate that clarity with the employees. We need to be clear, repeatedly, enthusiastically, and repeatedly make it clear what we expect. And reinforce that clarity. Develop a simple, consistent system for reviewing the process. We have the opportunity to work together for the greater good of this county. I encourage you to consider a plan that will help us build that organizational health. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Chairman, I have one. Pardon? I have one. Please come forward. Good morning. I usually don't sit over here, but um, this morning, Allison Middleton, Gasson Township, property owner, taxpayer, voter, the Ola County employee. I would like to start by saying this morning, this is my personal feeling that I would like to say if you want to offer success for the new account staff and finance director, I do urge you to temporarily put their training back under the clerk and their appointed staff. It is imperative that the training be consistent with each position to accomplish the goal of the new independent functional finance and accounting department. I believe the Board of Commissioners goal in separating the duties from within the clerk's office was to make these their own separate unit. And as a unit, each function of that unit needs to understand what the other is doing and exactly why. It seems simple enough to say that the wheel does not need to be reinvented. Teach what has worked for decades a standard practice and once instilled with that knowledge, let those then in charge make change as they do. I am okay with not being on the popular side of my voice here today. It has been very difficult to sit quietly over the past year and not voice much more. I'm here to do a job daily, which I am proud and happy to serve with in the county clerk's office. 
As a taxpayer and supporter of this county, I certainly hope that if you really wish to put things aside and move forward, you at least do the right thing for the new employees which have entered in the less than ideal situation and provide them with the best direction now. This is something that's not only avoidable, but executed by the Board of Commissioners and Administrator in a reckless manner and has brought us all here to this meeting today. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. McMillan. Good morning. I'm uh, Michael Miller on the work board. Um, I wasn't going to speak today, but uh, after listening to the comments today, I just want to uh, recognize what, uh, what uh, Commissioner Robbins and Commissioner West have done, and that is to tap the brakes on what appeared to be more than a 4 3 process on Monday. And I think you guys did the right thing to tap the brakes, listen to the employees, and take that feedback. Uh, your negative decision today. But again, I just want to acknowledge the fact that you guys did establish a process, put it in place, and more importantly, listen to employees. As a past manager, I've been on the receiving end of employee feedback, and not always positive. So I know it's difficult sometimes to take them here, but uh, you guys are doing the right thing, and again, I appreciate what you guys did uh, in that uh, rushing to the city on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes, Mr. Prince. Good morning. Good morning. I think it needs to be mentioned here that I and my staff did not cause this either, but I think we're the ones paying for it. Somehow we've just been thrown into this situation that has nothing to do with us, but because of past decisions, we're being set up to fail. When I started on my first day, the employees that were supposed to be training the account clerks had already had their access removed. And it would be considered an audit finding if they were to help us out. This is a very interesting thing to hear, seeing as our auditors are on board with them training us. Roadblocks have been set up all along the way, preventing us from having this proper training and becoming successful. Does this sound like a place you would want to work? I know for sure that information is being withheld from finance and HR. Information that we need, things like deadlines, reporting, various funds, errors, all of these things have been kept from us, and why is that? We can't ask about things that we don't know exist. No. Does this sound like a situation you would sign up for? If errors are ever brought to my attention, I'm the last person to find out. The auditors, the newspaper, board members, they've already been notified before it comes to me. Is that how this process should work? Is this the type of work environment that we want for the Leelanau County employees, especially the ones just starting out? From what I've seen here, this is not a professional work environment, and it's borderline toxic. Too many employees refuse to even have a working relationship together, and some can't stand speaking or being in the same room. We've tried to do our best getting everyone involved and working together, but sometimes it's hard to feel like that's possible. Everyone here tells me the exact same thing, that they want me to be successful. They want our department to be successful. It's the one thing that I've heard over and over again. On Wednesday, I think I voiced what it would take to help us out and to get us to where we need to be. And I don't know if that was heard or not. And I think some people feel like it was just ignored. Is this what I have to look forward to? Is this a place you would want to be? I was hired to be a department head and to lead to new staff and the new departments to make changes here. And in less than three months, without the proper training, 
with everything that's being put in front of us without any real discussion with me or my staff. The plan is to take it away. Doesn't matter if that's temporary or permanent. This started out as us trying to come up with a plan that should have been in place months ago. A training plan that would introduce new staff members to county government and its financials. Things as simple as running a report out of our accounting system haven't been able to show to my staff for fear of these fictitious audit findings. We've never refused anyone who's wanted to come in and help us out, and we've asked for help. We've been very willing to work with everyone, but that doesn't mean that we're willing to work for them. I thought it was really odd in my first few weeks here that so many people would stop me in the hall and tell me that I was happy, that they were happy I was here. I'm an accountant. Nobody likes to see us around. <laughs> I, mean, I was like, why are so many people excited about finance? Little did I know it didn't have to do with the financials. Employees here have been afraid to come forward and say anything for fear of any retaliation. Again, we've been willing to work with everyone, but not for them. Remaining an independent department is very important to me and my staff because we have a good idea of what will happen if we lose that independence. Thank you. Please, uh, please do not. Thank you. Thank you. But it was deserved. But thank you. <laughs> Any other public comments? Any commissioner comments? Yes, Mr. Robbins. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, employees. Any other commissioner comments? Yeah. I'm just talking. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just. Thank you, employees. It's uh, been emotional the last 48 hours here. This all started on 5-11 of 21. And I will always remember that day because I spent eight hours in the seat and out there in a parking spot. I always stopped there after every meeting because that's when I found out my son died that day. And I will share with you, everybody in this building reached out to me thanked me and you know, gave their condolences, except for one department or two people. I'm not going to tell you who they are, but I'm going to move on from there. When I started this, I knew that it would probably be a one term for me, but what I did is for you employees. Some of you trusted me, and it took a lot of work to trust some of you, one by one. And it wasn't until 24 hours ago, I was so damn proud of you people when you lined up to go talk to Mr. Wessel. And I'm proud of Mr. Wessel because he took the time and had the integrity to listen to every one of you. And I got something I'm going to read here that has not been included. It came to me the other night in an email. It says, I felt compelled to reach out and ask that you all take the time and watch the meeting that you all had today, yesterday, to really review what has been said and proposed by the clerk and treasurer. I ask that you do this with an open mind as a sense that some commissioners have blinders on, which then clouds your judgment. When has there ever been a time that stipends are paid to train others and the proposed offer by the clerk is to increase that? Take control and train the way they always have been trained. I heard sinking ships. This is the this is the problem you created. Fire fired from the job. Many negative comments from Miss Crocker. Just this one setting, I read embarrassing comments from Miss Harsa, and how other employees hate them, and that people are rude to them, as well as continuation of how the clerk has been wrong, and she needs her name cleared, which shows that there's an overall theme not what's best for the county, but what's best for them. It was mentioned numerous times today, we are not going to do this for nothing, which shows greed and disrecord with the decision that was set forth by the board. Instead of accepting it, they have worked weekends, over time for the chief assistant to go over financial records, show mistakes, 
try to prove a point that they are all the only ones that can do this job. Yet you have two people who left accounting for the treasurer's department. Did you ever ask why? Have you ever asked why so many employees have left the clerk's office to jump other offices to work? I think the clerk said she can't keep employees for such low wages, but yet all those people stayed in the county and moved to other offices. Has anyone ever asked why? I know it's because the work environment. Now we're all looking at the clerk's office to train new people, demand to have control over everything when they are so hostile to, to the situation. I do commend the employees and the new financial director for coming forth and asking for training, actually endorsing the treasurer's plan, which includes very couple, culpable clerks who have been doing the job for some time and the clerk and her staff to help the director at no cost. Sounds like to me, it would be a no win situation or a win win situation opportunity for the clerk and treasurer to show that they can rise above and do what's best for Leonard County. If it does not work, that will be on those elected officials, not the poor employees who have been thrown into this mess. There's so much I could share, but it's not my place. I stay upstairs away from this toxic environment that's been going on for years. Refresh memories, Shelley Roush, former chief accounting clerk with the clerk's encouragement and support ran against treasurer Vicki Killaway once the relationship with Roush and the clerk soured, John Gallagher was encouraged to run and support the clerk, and he wins. When that relationship goes sour, Jen Zwicky runs for treasurer, but loses. Thus much tension created during this time after election, Darcy Weaver slips into the treasurer's office. Hence, uh, Johanna Novak, Sarah Lautner jumped from accounting to treasurer's office. See the correlation? It's called dysfunctional which we want to spread to a piece, excuse me, the office because I feel and some commissioners that they've been wrong. In my days, it's called suck it up buttercup, move on, but they have not. And by what I see, the commissioners did not listen nor consider any options than the clerks. Thanks, Ty Wessel, for at least voting to table and ask the elected officials involved to work together with the financial director to come up come together and work together, at least honor what is being requested by the folks doing the job. That's the smart thing to do. Sorry for the rant, but I have worked over here for 30 years and have been my share of, have seen my share of stupid stuff been turned down, but I've always maintained my integrity and worked for the people of Leonard County. I'm embarrassed for the county and the ways people have sabotaged and betrayed the other employees of this county. Please reserve, res Review the Zoom meeting and look with fresh eyes open in mind and make an informed decision. Respectfully, Lori LaCrosse, Crime Victims Rights Advocate of the Prosecutor's Office of Leonard County. Gwen. If a change is needed in an organization, there are ways to do that and address it. The way this issue was addressed in May of 20 or 21, whenever it was, seems like a long time ago, was pretty reprehensible. It's not the way you make change in an organization. It's not the way you deal with problems. If there is a problem, it's appropriate to bring it up say that it needs work, study, discussion, but you don't rip someone's a job apart while someone's out of town. So that sets the whole situation up to fail. We do need teamwork, and I'm really, really concerned about that. I fail to understand how someone who does not do the job says he can train. I, I, I don't think we are comparing two equals today. We are comparing a plan to a proposal. A proposal was asked for, not a plan. And perhaps 
we still have more work to do before we make a decision. These people need to be trained. It should have happened a long time ago. The way this whole thing was done defies any good management at all. Thank you. And I'm glad to have heard from everybody. This all should have been done a long, long, long time ago before any changes were made so that we could understand the changes that need to be needed to happen. Other commissioner comments? Uh, Patricia and then Rick. The motion that I made earlier this week had nothing to do with eliminating two departments. It had nothing to do with firing staff. It had to do with training. The rumor mill has been building, creating considerable angst amongst all of you. There's been all kinds of rumors that have come to my ears about firing of staff, taking away authority, eliminating departments, putting them back under the clerk. Uh, the clerk has too much power. The clerk doesn't get along with people. Two departments never have gotten along, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I know you're hearing the same thing, and I am sorry for that, because it's uncomfortable to come to work and to hear those things and wonder, is this true? Is this what's really happening? That's not what my motion was. My motion was to provide training. Now, how did we get there? The clerk would have assisted in a transition plan if that's what the Board of Commissioners wanted way back in May. But as Commissioner Algar just pointed out, that wasn't how things happened. It was tossed out, it was passed, and it moved on. And eventually, because it was passed, the Democrats, although I don't like putting people in boxes, but since we've done that today, the Democrats did agree, and we've been supportive of, of creating two new departments and making them effective, despite the, excuse me, the additional costs to taxpayers, et cetera. That's what was wanted, that was what was done, and that was the motion that was passed. The clerk did offer in June to assist with training before our new finance director was hired and before the new staff came in. That was rejected. The temporary staff that were there, and we thank Darcy Weaver and Johanna and Sarah Lautner for stepping up and helping and were being hired to do that function at the time. When the new staff came in, they could have assisted more with training, but they didn't. They had other jobs to return to. So the new staff sat there, and they are exactly correct. They got no training except for what the clerk's office was allowed to prevent, present, and it wasn't much because they were told that they were to stay in their own lane and not get involved, which I find incredible. The treasurer's plan, quote, is one that involves everyone, but it didn't involve the clerk when it was created, did it? It was presented here, and the clerk had a heads up, and it had, she had seen it, but she had no involvement in it. And the clerk and the clerk's office are the people that have been doing the budget. So let's come back to what we're really trying to accomplish. It's my understanding that the words that were offensive um, in terms of the new director of finance were changed to reflect supervision and oversight and with full account of, uh, of full authority remaining with the county administrator. So what her, her proposal will be when she gets a chance to provide a plan is to provide training. The clerk didn't ask for this. She didn't ask, she didn't come to us and say, hey, I want to train. This last time. After June, she said, okay, I'll keep my own lane. You don't want me. 
we asked her, what would it take for you to agree after all this that's transpired, including being accused of committing a crime, what will this take for you to agree to do the training so that the finance people can be successful and have the guidance, know the policy, and do the best possible job? She responded with that proposal. We didn't ask her for a plan. The treasurer's plan pops up, and I applaud him for putting something together, even if it didn't involve the clerk. And now we have a competitive situation where we've got a plan and a proposal that we asked for. We couldn't discuss just the proposal because the plan was there. And now the employees are even more upset. Now, I'm glad that Commissioner Wessel gave you an opportunity yesterday and this morning to, to air your concerns, because that is important. And I agree with Commissioner Algar, that should have happened a long time ago. And I agree that this process should never have reached this level. But it has, and it's where we are. I will say again, I think the clerk will come up with a plan that assesses the needs of what our new director and the staff require, will work in concert with everybody, and will provide the training necessary. She is not about firing anybody. She's not about taking anybody's job. She's about training. And I am so sorry that we are where we are today and that she has had to put up with, and you have had to put up with, the dissent that's gone on. So I, I will make my motion with the modifications that the clerk talked about with our county administrator so that it is more appealing. But it was never her intent to do the other. And I know that from discussion with her. Thank you for coming today, and thank you for speaking up. And I hope this isn't the end of your speaking up on issues and letting us know how you feel. Commissioner Rushton? Yes, I hear him talking, but I still hear people not listening, unfortunately. Um, on page two of the proposal um, from the treasurer's office specifically says, and I will quote, assistance from the clerk will be imperative for the continued training of management, financial, and other organizational reporting. Further assistance is required from the clerk in granting the finance director the administrator rights for the Harris software and for the accounting drive to be opened for all users. Consistent communication and collaboration among financial departments will be key in supporting the successful implementation of a systematic process and financial procedure refinements for continuous improvement and growth as a financial whole. So. Thank you. Where, did, did the clerk uh, bring a plan for us today? Did we ask for one for today? Let's, the let's, uh, she had let's, made a comment. Let's that, deal with that when we get to the agenda item. Okay. Any other pub, uh, commissioner comment? Yes, uh, Mr. Robbins. One more. I went back and uh, reviewed some of the meetings over the last year and a half. And some of the commissioners here that are pushing the one plan. I remember in the beginning, um, have we talked to the employees? Have we listened to the employees? That was over a year ago. And uh, we did. Maybe it was a little later in the program, but uh, it happened in the last 48 hours. And the employees have spoken, just like our constituents speak, and we need to listen to them. We need to back them. I mean, the best speech this morning was Jared himself. He told the story, what's been going on. 
Um, the only apology I owe, Mr. Mikowski, is to the employees here that this has gone on that long. And that's the apology I'm making today is to the employees. And I'm sorry it's taken this long. I was told in the beginning of this by another commissioner who no longer sits here. I was only on the board for five months. And when this motion was made, and he approached me, and I was taken back by it because this commissioner had been around for a long time. He said, I didn't realize there was a problem in that building. And I looked at him and it's like, how could you not see it? So uh, I'm hoping that uh, there is an alternate plan today and we can move forward. And uh, like I said, the, uh, the employees have spoken. That's what you asked Commissioner Allgaier a year ago, that we need to hear from the employees. They have spoken and we need to listen and move forward. Thank you. Other uh, commissioner comments? I'm going to save my uh, commissioner comment to uh, introduce the uh, uh, first agenda item. So we'll move to our agenda. We have uh, two purposes of our meeting today, and the first item on the agenda is a finance department update proposal, and and we have a motion on the table, uh, yeah, but I, I uh, would like to share what I heard after talking to 30, 32 different staff people um, since last Wednesday's meeting, after receiving emails, and after reaching out to Michelle Jared and John. I, uh, first of all, I did uh, send to John, Jared, and Michelle six questions. And I, I, I gave these questions because it was important for me to know their answer in order to guide my vote today. First question was, will you support the administrator's recommendation and make it work? Yes or no. Will you commit to full and active participation in weekly meetings as spelled out in benchmark five? Yes or no. Will you attempt to demonstrate to staff and board of commissioners that you are each willing to support each other and ensure accomplishment of the eight benchmarks? Yes or no. Will you commit to doing whatever you can to diffuse staff alliances and move us forward? Yes or no. Will you direct your staff to full cooperation? Yes or no. And will you trust that we can effectively accomplish the charge spelled out in the board of commissioner resolution authorizing the creation of, of finance and HR positions. I heard back from two of the three people. I have not yet received uh, uh, the response from uh, Michelle. She had election training all day, but I did hear from Jared and, and John uh, yes to all of those questions. Those were important questions to me. Then I uh, reached out to Chad and I asked him if he would invite staff to meet with me. I was a little scared to do that uh, because they've been watching us for 18 months. Uh, but uh, I need to tell you that I really enjoyed uh, the, the meetings with the staff. And uh, they were short, they were brief because I only had two and a half hours to do it. And I came back early this morning and did a couple more. What I heard consistently, consistently, was much pride and commitment. Much pride and commitment. But I also heard concern. Almost consistently, I heard concern. I had heard concern about teamwork. I heard concern about access and information flow. Uh, almost without success, uh, with it, almost without exception, I heard support for two new departments. Almost without exception, I heard support for the two new departments, the two new positions, HR and finance. Clearly, support for that. Almost uh, without support, I heard concern from staff that they felt like Board of Commissioners didn't always know what was really going on, that we weren't very well informed. We talk amongst <coughs> ourselves, but we don't talk uh, with staff. I heard that, and I, I had to pick for that because nobody came in and, and scolded. Everybody was, 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 was so polite and so proud to be here. I heard a lot of concern but also a lot of praise from Michelle Crocker. I heard, I heard comment after comment after comment about her service and how much she's done, and Jen for her service and how much she's done. Without exception, I heard that. I didn't, there was not one person that bashed our clerk 
or our deputy clerk, not one person. But neither did I hear much support for the clerk's office doing the training of the finance department. They need to be involved, we need assistance, uh, but there was not much support for the proposal we received from the clerk. I heard quite a bit of concern about trust issues. And I heard lots of concern about sometimes it's really hard to get information. And I heard some concerns about passwords and, and I, I can't, I have to wait for days to get what I need to get. Uh, why is it so, so tight? Uh, I heard some, some concern from some departments, and they weren't all department heads, and they weren't all elected officials. They were, they were across the board people, but I heard concern about, uh, we have responsibility to do our job, but we don't have the authority to do it. We're having trouble doing our job because we don't have the tools we need to do the job. So I, I want to tell you that I left here last night and I was very appreciative of the staff that met with me and those that didn't meet that sent me something. Um, I know that some of my commissioner colleagues uh, uh, didn't approve of the way I went about it. Uh, I'm not going to support the motion that's on the table uh, and I am not, uh, uh, so I wanted to introduce that because we, we had a uh, uh, a motion on the table and we can continue to debate that motion if we want but I wanted to make sure you knew that I have I have decided I cannot support the motion that's on the table and and I would like to see if our administrator has a different plan but there is a motion on the table so we'll either have to withdraw the motion or or uh, call the question I'm sorry I didn't hear a motion on the table who made the motion uh, Patricia tabled. on Wednesday. It was tabled on Wednesday. It was, oh, and you, you put it back on the table. Okay, now I'm following you. I didn't realize that you had put it back on the table. Could you read the motion and then we'll see what we want to do with that, Allison? Here, I've got it if you need That would be great. Would you read it, Patricia? Uh, I'll give it to Allison so she has it. Welcome. The motion on the table is I move that the Leelanau County Board of Commissioners approve and adapt the Leelanau County Clerk Michelle Cracker's proposal in total as outlined in her email to County Administrator Chet Janik on October 18th and that the details outlined in the proposal be read into the minutes. That has been moved and seconded. Do you want to speak to it again, Patricia? Well, I, I want to ask, raise the question. It's my understanding, and I, this is addressing our county administrator. Chet, it's my understanding from Michelle that the two of you met and changed the wording on the thing on the first uh, statement and also uh, on the stipend. That's not completely accurate. I gave Michelle a revised proposal that I drafted based on the comments that I gave it to her. Uh, I have not had a response from her whether she would accept it or not. And I do not have a revised proposal. I privately gave her my thoughts, took her wording and put my words in it. But I don't feel comfortable speaking on her behalf. If you wish, I can tell you what I suggested to her. But even that, I don't feel comfortable with because I gave it to her as my suggestions on how we can maybe go forward with this plan. But I have not had a response from her. It was in speaking with her yesterday, I thought that she was in agreement with you. Mr. Chairman, okay, can we take a five minute that. break and check with our clerk? I don't, if there's a motion needed, an amendment to the motion needed, I think we ought to have it and not proceed with, with mm -hmm. uh, what I made if, unless yeah. it's accurate. So if we could take a five minute break well, and let's if contact. If our clerk is listening, she'll probably come in. I don't know if she is listening. Let's, let's, uh, let's take, let's take yeah. a, a break and, and invite her to come in. If, if yes, we'd please. Like to do that. Uh, um, a memo, and I suggest we all read that, and then I saw Patricia's hand up. I just want to clarify what you're getting there is revised from the clerk's office. It is not a proposal that she and I agreed to, nor is it my original proposal to her. So what you have is 
the terms that the clerk modified. Okay. And if you want, I can address that after you have a chance to read it. Uh, Mr. Janik, is, is the red what you gave her? Uh, the red is part of what I gave her that she agreed to, is what she told me just a few minutes ago. Okay. It's not completely what I gave her. Okay. But I can address that if you, sure. if you wish. I'm not sure that I even know what we got because uh, the administrator put forward something and, and uh, then a draft uh, of something and, and now this. So I'd ask the administrator to give us uh, All right. background if you okay. can. Yeah, and uh, at some point today, I'd like to give you my overview and perspective of the entire process because a lot of things have been said and I've been pretty silent trying to find common ground. but. Uh, <laughs> Once you vote, I will share some stuff with you. So what I gave yesterday to Michelle privately was my suggestions that I thought may help find common ground. Uh, I gave her yesterday morning privately, just thinking, Michelle, at least think about this, because I know what the concerns are. I, I did give it to her. Uh, I talked to her several times. She did have training yesterday, so I, I know it's a busy day. I set up a meeting for her, the treasurer, and uh, our finance director to meet together to hopefully find common ground. My goal was the four of us could come here to the table and present a unified force. Uh, we were not able to meet it because the clerk had training all day, she said, which I know she had training. It was a very busy day. So we did really try to meet. I believe that was your suggestion. And I was hoping that we all could come to the table to revise proposal, but unfortunately that did not happen. So I did meet with the treasurer and the finance director. We reviewed Mr. Wessel's six uh, points. We actually were meeting the second your email came to us. So we, I actually read that we, and you responded, and two of them responded back to you and in my office. I asked them all directly, can they agree to your six points? And they said yes. I talked to Michelle and she said she said training and could not meet. So I took her proposal and I made what I thought were some potential points that may help the situation. And uh, so let me review her, my proposal. There are some things she, I guess, has accepted until a few minutes ago, I did not know where she stood with this. She and I talked last night around nine o'clock uh, she asked me if I could email it. I gave her a hard copy yesterday morning around nine o'clock last night. I, I actually called her to see where we were. She called me first. I returned her call and she asked me if I could email her the word version that she would consider making some changes. So until <laughs> Commissioner so little mentioned it, I had no talk. I did not know she was agreeing with any of this stuff. So let me just review what I proposed. Some she has agreed with, some she has not. And once again, I feel very uncomfortable speaking on behalf of the clerk, uh, but she has chosen not to come to this meeting. So uh, the biggest thing is about the supervision of the staff. And uh, based on the legal opinion that Mr. Wessel and I got from our corporate counsel the other day, uh, at any time 
Well, first of all, the resolution that you passed in October of 2021 is, in fact, nothing you're doing here is counter to that. It's how the process is followed through. So at any time in that resolution, you gave the full authority to the administrator to implement the plan, hire the people, set up the structure. That is still ongoing. And at any time, the administrator has the right to void any parts of Michelle's proposal. That could be changed by the board, but because of the resolution you passed, the administrator ultimately has authority at any point to say, this is not working, we're stopping it. Even if you vote right now to approve her original proposal, the administrator has the right to void that out. You could override that, but that's a separate issue. So I propose to her that, and I won't read the whole thing because you have seen it, that any supervising changes or discipline determination could only occur after consultation and approval of the administrator. So the administrator would still have final authority on any Are you reading actions. from her proposal right now? I'm reading from what I proposed to her, giving you a little background. Okay. Okay. That, it appears, from what we just passed out, that she has agreed to. Okay. Uh, number two, her request for legal costs for the county clerk. I modify that to say for any county government-related accusations. Her proposal does not state that, and I just have to protect the interests of the county. I put that in there, that it'll only be valid under county government related accusations, which is by law you have to do anyway for any elected official. So in my opinion, that's a critical part that protects the county and also protects her or any elected official. Mm -hmm. By law, if any elected official is accused of uh, legal issues, that elected official has to go to the prosecutor first and ask for legal assistance. The prosecutor can say yes or no. If the prosecutor says no, the elected official has the option to come to the board, ask for legal assistance, financial help to cover their cost, and the board can say yes or no. If the board says no, the, legal, the elected official has the right to go to court and demand it, and if there's legitimate cause, the courts most time have approved that cost. Most time the county boards have approved those costs also. I have a question on this. Yeah. Um, pay legal costs, you're talking about the legal coverage for the elected. Does that extend to the departments and the employees within those departments? Yeah, it's a different process because if you're elected versus department. Okay, but, but that was also, something though. Administrator and the board would have to determine, but yes, they are okay. covered. They're, yes. they're already yeah. covered as well. Yeah, it's a little different for a elected official, yep. but yeah. Right. So my proposal will simply do, do, add the word county government related accusations. Uh, Jack, she has not agreed to that. Yeah, uh, I have a, a just a comment or kind of question on, on the legal side too. I think if, as, is, as was the case when the um, uh, criminal charge was brought against her or proposed, that was filed by... Well, actually, there was no criminal charges. There was allegations. So allegations, yeah, yes. So I'm clear that choice out. of words. Thank yeah. you. Uh, when the allegations were filed, it was filed by the county. So the county then was, would have been, could not represent her, if I understood right, uh, in that particular case. Uh, because yeah, we were I'm not a legal there. expert, but I... We were already on there. I assume that would have been... Would have been a conflict case. of interest. But there was no criminal charges. No, it wasn't. It <coughs> yeah, was an allegation. Sure Thank that. you. So my recommendation was that she add the word county government related accusations. Uh, she appears that she has not agreed to that term because it's not, she did not make that change. Uh, in terms of the stipend, I try to find common ground. I reduce it from 250 to 175 for clarification purpose because she is getting currently a stipend of $75. So I want to clarify it wasn't 250 plus the 75. And I put in there, that it be paid at the end of the training period, where it takes two months or four months, do the training, and then get paid at the end of a successful thing. She will not agree to that. Her position, it has to be that amount every pay period. So she is not agreeing to the terms.
for herself or the chief deputy clerk. Uh, uh, so that's basically it. So she has agreed, and legally, I, the administrator has the authority to uh, make uh, to void any proposed changes made by the clerk if this agreement is paid. She did not agree to adding the term county government related accusations, and she is not agreeing to having the stipend pen paid at the end of the training period. Okay, Patricia, you have a motion on the floor. You want to speak to that motion? Yes, well, what I'd like to do is to uh, modify that uh, motion to reflect the um, information just provided so that um, what gets read into the minutes would be the change here that would reflect that the uh, change in supervision and um, as it's described here, being vested with the authority to make the decision, the consultation approval with the administrator. So it does not put that solely in the clerk's office. And also um, the 175 week making making it clear that it is she's already getting the 75 so i would add those two i'm not sure why um the county clerk did not agree to um, the wording of county related under the legal portion i suspect it might have related to um, what she went through earlier this year i'm not I, or last year i'm not sure I'm just not sure why she didn't do that, so we'll leave it as she has it. But that would be my modified motion. Okay, so it's basically a motion uh, to change it so that it's consistent with the latest document that we received yes, from the clerk. Yes, please. Everybody comfortable with uh, Patricia making that change to reflect the, uh, um, the, the, the wording of the clerk's message? Mr. Chairman, is this an amendment to the ori original motion? She asked if she could change the motion. Yes. It, so it's an amendment? Yes. Okay. So we'll vote on the amendment and then the yes. original? Right. Is that the correct procedure? Yes. I think so. Thank you. Uh, we didn't get a second to the amendment, though. I'll second it. Okay. Any uh, discussion? Patricia? No, I think I've, I've pretty well said what I, what I think. I think her intent is, the clerk's intent is to provide best practice training. It's not to usurp responsibility or authority or to in any way eliminate the departments. Um, it's to get them off on the right path to provide all the information that they, they are seeking and should have been provided before now, although probably didn't have a means to do it. So I think this, this solves the problem and I think it, you know, I fully understand where Jared would feel the way he does, so would I. But a lot of this is coming from rumors floating around. It's not from what has transpired. So I think this change will hopefully make him feel more comfortable um, and uh, we'll get, get the training portion done and, and he will be successful in his job, as I'm sure he will be. And I'm sure the staff will be too. Thank you. Commissioner Lautner. Um, so to be, to, to be clear, this is almost identical to yesterday's so this would um, switch it back under the supervision of the clerk. Um, necessary supervisory and disciplinary determination should have authority after consulting with the administrator. I think, I think that's a little mess, messy myself, but um, as administrator, maybe, maybe Chet knows better how that process would work. Um, that was for the finance director. And then for the uh, account staff positions, it would also move it back under, uh, temporarily back under the clerk, um, and she would have necessary supervisor and disciplinary determination after consulting with the administrator. I have a real concern too with, um, and, I, and I think this is critical, Leelanau County will pay any, any legal fees for the county clerk or her office for the attorneys of her choice, for any accusations, allegations, complaints, and charges alleged 
or sought after her or the office of the elect clerk. That is wide open, wide open. And I know there's some pretty darn expensive attorneys out there. I know, uh, as Patricia said, that something that happened earlier this year, and I think if that goes to the allegation, that was county related. So that would be, I would, that's, that's a, I think to have put the county government in there was, is the only logical thing to watch, um, to have that process. Um, so then the clerk would get $175 a week stipend. It is MERS eligible. We don't want to forget that. Um, and the deputy clerk would get $250 a week stipend. Um, that remains in there. Thank you. Thank you. Other, uh, other questions before we go back to Deb? I think you spoke once, didn't you, Deb? Go ahead. You're no, on. I did not. Um, <clears throat> I see very little change in this. I still see the direct supervision of not only the department head, but the um, staff. Why is it that the department head does not have supervision over his own staff? Why is that? Again, you're taking away from him the ability to perform as a director. That's the least, is the staff. And why does one director have to be over another elected official when Chet is the one that's supposed to oversee his department? department head. Yeah. I have a problem with that. As Melinda mm -hmm. mentioned, um, the le legal language on this, broad, very broad. I hope the taxpayers like showing out money because you'll be on the hook for everything. Any accusation, any allegation, any complaints or charges alleged, broad. She's already got legal coverage. And the stipend, Trudy Gallus sat here and told us many of our employees over the course of years have stepped up to the plate. They have trained, they've taken on duties from other offices, and I can go on and on over the years with no stipend. So if you start paying stipends for training, because that's all it should be, is training, how are you gonna, how, how are you gonna rectify what's gone on in, in history when those employees or department heads never were compensated. This is just a rehash of yesterday. Thank you. Doesn't, I, um, doesn't Patricia, do much for me. Oh, are you are you done? Excuse me. Are you done? I am. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Yeah. Patricia. It, um, addressing just a couple of points that you raised, um, Commissioner Russian. This supervision and that relates to training. It doesn't relate to whatever else our finance director is doing in relationship to the administrator. It's, it's talking about training. And in terms of the concern over the legal costs, offer an amendment. If you, don't, if you think it's too broad, offer an amendment. I don't hear anybody offering amendment just pointing out that it's a bad thing. No. In, terms, in terms of the stipend, this is not something that's going to happen without a lot of work. In fact, I was amazed that the treasurer's proposal didn't have any request for support in some capacity and that they could do this during an eight hour day, which says, are you overstaffed? Um, if you can consume a large assignment like this. But I do did see that uh, he was suggesting that the the clerk's office do a port of that. I don't think we'd ask anybody to take on a major responsibility without training. We certainly don't do that with any consultant, whether we brought them in for training programs or whatever, when it's a major thing that is not part of their job responsibility, in fact, was taken away. Why are we loath to pay a small amount for training? 
So I, I support her request for training. I would support that request for anybody. I think one of the things that I've heard said by staff before is, if I don't do it, I have to do it. It's my job. I'm not an elected official. Elected official doesn't have to do that. So, and, and we shouldn't be requiring that of anybody without compensation. Historically, I don't know how we go back and pay everybody. I don't think that's that's something that, that really fits with this right now. But I don't want to cut anybody off, but I suspect call. minds are made up. And at some point we need to move forward. Uh, but, but Commissioner Lautner, you had your hand up, and then Commissioner Algaier, you had your hand up. Well, I, I just I forgot that we wanted to mention earlier that, that this does not say anything about training, period. We still don't have a training plan, so there's no training. And um, in, in, someone said it earlier this morning, we have to listen. We've heard a lot, and we have to listen. <coughs> Thank you. Bye. When? So I mentioned this before, but I hear two problems. I hear a teamwork management issue that needs to be addressed. You guys have concerns, and that's important. We have a responsibility to maintain an accurate budget to take care of our citizens' finances. That is our mandate. That's not about teamwork. That's a whole different issue. <clears throat> the training, we have allowed training to be supposedly done not by the people who did the job previously. And what I'm hearing from the employees is we need help. For a short time, it's our responsibility to make sure the employees taking care of our people's money know how to do it. And they want to know how to do it. Of course you do. Nobody likes not feeling like you can do your job. So for a short period, our job is to train. I've, we've tried every other way. We've tried not having the people who used to do the job do the train. It, it's obviously not worked. For a temporary period, the people who performed the tasks should train new people to do the tasks, and then you're on your own, your, your own department. I hope you would not take that personally. We have to take care of the citizens' tax money. It's got to be done accurately. You've brought up a real teamwork issue that we need to, that this, that needs to be addressed. We haven't heard a plan. I, I imagine the people who did the work, we could table this whole thing once more and, and hear what the plan is. But the people who did the job would know how to train new people to do it. I don't see, and it, we've tried other things. I don't see another way to make sure that our tax dollars are administered the way they need to be. This is temporary, period. It's just temporary. Before we go to Deb and then Rick, uh, I just want to clarify, just as a plan, with benchmarks and goals that the auditor, the clerk, the <coughs> treasurer have agreed to in their final trip. Which one is that? The one I presented last month verbally to mm -hmm. the board and to the finance committee, and I put it in writing October 18th. This, this is a special one. development plan mm -hmm. that, like I said, the auditor, the clerk, the treasurer, the finance director all agree. Each one privately and as a group agreed to the plan. So we do have a plan. 
right. what you have then is the conditions from the clerk for her involvement with the plan. Yeah. Right. Because she said there were conditions involved. That's why she came up with this memo. I asked her, okay, if you agree with the plan, what are your conditions? Because she said there are conditions. I asked them to, I asked her to put it in writing because we need to have clarification. Mr. Gallagher on his own informed Mr. Wessel and I that he has a plan that is in line with everything in the goals and objectives. I specifically asked him, is his plan, does he agree with my eight benchmarks? And he said yes. So I just want to clarify that. We do have a plan in place. It was my responsibility. It's not the board's decision how the plan is implemented. You have the right to veto it. But this is a, and I call it a professional development plan. It's the same thing I shared with you a month ago, six weeks ago at a finance committee meeting and last month's meeting. I just put it in writing now. But I want to make clear, there is no disagreement on how we're going to proceed. These are measurable benchmarks. Each one of them can be measured in March or April or February. Are we making, are we achieving these benchmarks, yes or no? So there is a plan in place. What you have is the conditions of what the clerk will participate in, and then a more probably detailed procedure on how this plan will be implemented from the treasurer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Rushton. I just want to say, you know, sometimes we always get stuck and we don't think outside the box. Um, and with that said, we always have the opportunity to bring in Riemann and have him work with our finance director if Michelle refuses to assist. That's an option that we have. We can rescind the audit contract, go with a different auditor at the end of the year because I understand that's a conflict for him, but he is as well as knowledgeable about the nuances of what goes on uh, in our books. So we do have options. And, and, I, I, and I did ask uh, the administrator, depending on the outcome of our vote, to, he, he does have uh, uh, other options to talk about. So. Okay. Commissioner Rushton? Or, uh, Robbins. Robbins. We'll help you today, Ty. Yeah. Thank you, Ty. We, um, we do have a plan. I agree with Gwen. Um, we need a plan. And I look at it as, I use Mr. Janik as an example. Um, he's going to build a house. He's asked two builders to put in a plan. Or he has a plan, but two builders approached him on how they're going to build a house. One person over here gave him his plan how to build the house. Um, I was hoping that our clerk would show up. She's had, you know, John's proposal came in at, what, 449 on Monday. Uh, the clerk had time. She has given us a letter of demands, you know, to make Jared, there's a trust issue here on both sides. And if you want to tone that trust issue down, she should have been here and gave a plan, a detailed plan, how she's going to help Jared, how she's going to help these two girls. But we have not seen anything on paper or anything from her, how she's going to train them. So all she's saying is, I will train them with a demand letter. And I'm disappointed that, you know, we could have probably worked this out maybe. Um, I mean, I go right, right back to June of 21. I'm negotiable. Anybody who knows me, I'm a mediator. I don't have to have everything that I'm asking for. I asked her point blank in a meeting. Would you sit down and talk? She said, it's never going to happen. And here we are a year and a half later, and we're in the same boat. But, you know, I agree. Chet, you have a plan. You've done a great job. We've had two builders give their proposal on how they want to build that plan, and we only got one, one proposal and one letter of demand, and it comes down to a trust issue. Um, neither side wants to work with, so I'm, I'm suggesting that there's a way, there's a plan, Oh, we can do this, but on part of it, we're going to have to go outside. Okay, I, 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 I see another hand up, and we can do that, but I think we are beginning to repeat ourselves. So let's uh, let's be ready to take a vote soon. 
I just heard him say the clerk was asked for a proposal, not a plan. I I don't understand. I, I'm saying she's had since Monday to come up with something that would, all of us would have felt comfortable. Chair, the board, everybody in this room. Mr. Chairman, proposed. would you have the administrator review that process again? He created the plan. Correct. All right, yeah, let me just. So you've already created the plan. Yeah, the plan so that is meeting the plan. Approximately six weeks ago, we talked about the need for a plan, and internally we've been talking about that. And after you vote, I'll give you more details. But I came to the finance committee, and we all agreed we needed benchmarks and some goals. I developed them. I shared them verbally with the board at the last regular board meeting. I put them in writing. I gave copies to the treasurer finance director, the clerk prior to finalizing them if they had any issues, and the auditor. I met with them separately and as a group asking is there anything that's missing in my plan. And that's once, once again the auditor, the clerk, the treasurer, and the finance director. And I think everyone will agree with that. that I asked them please review it. Am I missing anything? Because I'm not a finance person. <laughs> but I wanted to have true benchmarks that we can really measure so it's not subjective you know because you can have a goal that people can read different ways i said is there any benchmarks that are missing after i drafted that i call our auditor and said is there anything that's missing that you see from an outside perspective he said no matter of fact his firm has the procedures to implement this plan <coughs> so everyone has felt comfortable this is the plan the clerk said she would do it under certain conditions. I asked her to put those conditions in writing. So because I didn't want a gray area. There's been enough confusion already. So I asked her to put her conditions in writing. The treasurer had no conditions. Then he came up with a plan. He notified Mr. Wells and I, I think a week ago, that he was going to come up. So we said, sure, we encourage him. As soon as we got the plan Monday at 4.47 or something, the next day I shared that with the clerk. So I was going to be completely honest. There has been dialogue. Um, I, I, we did not sit down with the treasurer to review this plan. We got, we got it, said thank you. I gave it to the clerk. I shared it. Uh, and then all of you got copies of it at Wednesday's meeting. I show one more question. Um, Deb Rushton and then Gwen, and then I hope somebody calls the question. Call the question. Call the question, sir. I just. Uh, uh, Deb, Deb had the floor, so. Okay. What I was going to say was we have a plan. There's a difference in the process of executing the plan, correct? Yes, I think it's a very fair statement. Yes. Right. If you're asking me, yes. So we have one that has conditions. And we have one that does not have conditions. However, um, in one plan, you've got treasurer and treasurer's department, clerk, clerk's department um, working together to train. In the other plan, you've got the clerk's department. We've got some talent in the treasurer's department. It would be a shame not to utilize that talent. Thank you. Gwen and then uh, Melinda. So I think it was mentioned that we could have, um, did you say Peacock do the training? And I just wonder how much an hour he would charge compared, saying, compared I, I, to paying a small stipend to the people who did the job. But we might consider that, that he would be considerably more expensive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Melinda? Question. Is there a second to that? Second. Second. All in favor of calling the question? No. Aye. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Opposed? Yes. OK, now we have an amendment on the, on the floor we're going to vote on. And let's do a roll call vote. I think we're all. We need to know. Yeah, we need to know. What we're voting on here. Could you help us with that, Allison? I will certainly try. <laughs> okay. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going back to look for the amendment. 
Did you have that? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Sotis Little. Yes. Um, I, I think I, we had a, somebody had asked that we read the amendment. Do you have that? Just so there's no confusion on 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 what it is. Do you want me to? Do I do out? not have a verbatim, but it the, would be the, the, the amendment is to modify the original motion to reflect the um, the new the new memo from the clerk. Yeah, yeah. the document we just re received. Correct. Everybody clear on that? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, now let's vote on the amendment then. Okay. Commissioner Sotis Little. Yes. Chairman Wessel. No. Commissioner Elgeyer. Yes. Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Commissioner Lautner. No. Commissioner Robbins. No. Commissioner Rushton. No. Amendment fails. Okay, now we have a motion on the floor um, that uh, is the same as the amendment, but it reflects uh, the demands uh, uh, the request of the clerk uh, prior. And I will withdraw that motion because there's no point in going through it. It won't pass. Would the second? Sure. Okay. Uh, then we've asked Chair right. to... Uh... All right. I have no notes here, so I'll just speak and say some things. There's a lot of comments and uh, just want to clarify some stuff here. So when, uh, well, when this term began with these commissioners, I verbally told them I would probably submit my retirement. And then I did it last year, so I never anticipate this ongoing controversy. And it's unfortunate it happened for everyone, because I truly have enjoyed working with everyone here, including the clerk and so forth. But when the uh, proposal was made in May of 21, I had no knowledge of it. Uh, I've tried to work with the past two chairmen and Mr. Robbins to find common ground. We met numerous times. Uh, the staff had virtually no input with me during that whole process. Once the resolution was passed in October of 2021, I think the staff, staff may have felt more empowered because the board passed that. And I received comments from almost every department head any elected official at that time, which actually surprised me. I did not solicit it. Uh, the vast majority of them were in favor of creating these two new departments. I just want to state that. Uh, I can honestly state no one told me that prior to that. I think everyone kind of just wanted to see how it played out. The job was posted for the finance director. I know it's going to be very controversial, so I put together a committee of six people to work with me to select that, including our auditor and including the uh, Finance Director for Grand Traverse County, who I have a great deal of respect for. I asked Mrs. Gala to join us in that process because I have a great deal of respect for her. I asked one of the staff people that's going to impact this to join us in the process. We interviewed two candidates, both were internally. There were no external candidates. Several expressed interest, but the concern was the politics of the board and how this would play out. And so uh, we only had two candidates. Uh, it was a very difficult choice. I offered the job to one person. Uh, I was very honest with her what the concerns were from the staff because it was split. And the committee was not in agreement on who the next finance director to be. I felt for the success of the program and for that person, I needed to outline what the concerns were and what my expectations were before she said yes or no. Uh, she came back and said she would take the job which I was grateful for. It was a controversial decision, but I felt long-term it would be best for everyone. Uh, the three months that she was in the position, it was a challenge for her and for me. And at the end of April, she decided to resign, which I wish her the best. I had no grudges against her. Uh, she could not live by my conditions, and it was not a good partnership. So I thanked her. I have a lot of respect for her. I still do, and we went forward. I uh, posted the job. We had no applicants. I looked at a couple of consultants, including CPA firms, including people that are retired in the area that had expertise. A uh, couple of them verbally said yes, and then depending what happened between them, they 
withdrew because of a lot of controversy and uh, what's been an enterprise. And I think a couple of them may have got phone calls from people here. And anyway, they chose not to participate. I reached out to a couple firms, uh, CPA firms. Yes, if Raymond does it, there'd have to be a separation of duties if they serve in the director capacity. If they're consulting, it's a different issue. Uh, at that time, the board reviewed it again, I think in June or July, the decision was continue to find a finance director. Uh, Mr. Prince applied. I uh, put together a small interview team. And then uh, when he was the finalist, I invited the clerk, the treasurer, and our auditor to join us in that process, along with Mrs. Gala. And uh, Jared did well. And everyone in the room agreed that he had the skills to be our finance director. So he was hired. I certainly did not anticipate the two accounting clerks transferring to the treasurer's office. That was a major setback. For professional reasons, I understand why they did it, and I'm happy for them, and I congratulate them, because it is an advancement for both of them. So it worked out well. Sarah Lauther has a degree in finance. I told her personally, long term, that I thought she had the ability to be a finance director here or treasurer at some point. She's a very sharp lady. She also had a baby at the same time. You can remember that. We were going through this transition. 50% of our county staff was on maternity leave. That made it a challenge. I mean, you can't write this thing up and see this is how it's going to happen. If everyone wrote this up, people would say this is too far fetched. It's, this is beyond thing. So Sarah was on maternity leave. Here we are trying to implement a new structure, and we have half the staff on maternity leave. She came back. Uh, there was an opening in the treasurer's office. Sarah took it. Uh, I encouraged her to apply for it. It was a great opportunity for her. It's more advancement for her. Financially, it was a gain for her. And she's using her accounting degree. Uh, then there was another opening because the chief deputy or uh, a deputy clerk went to the Suns Bay Schools. Uh, I found out that the, I'm not clerk, treasurer, that deputy treasurer had a degree in culinary arts. <laughs> And she had a chance to go work in her home school district. So, of course, it was a great opportunity for her. So she took that. So that meant we had nobody working in the accounting department. I think Darcy came in and did the best that she could under circumstances. Darcy worked in the accounting department. At the same time, she was trying to learn her HR duties. And that was very difficult for her. And she was very stressed out, as we all were said I tried to bring some external people in as interim finance directors. They expressed interest at first, then uh, said they were not interested in that. Uh, like I said, the committee fully supported uh, Mr. Prince. He was brought on. We also hired two new accounting clerks that have background in accounting, and I'm convinced they want to learn. But there's a big difference between government accounting and private business accounting. And that has been a challenge for them. And Mr. Prince obviously did a lot of audits, but it's one thing to look at the big picture versus the day-to-day -day details. And I'm sure he has ability to do that. I'm sure our two accounting mm -hmm. clerks have the ability to do that. And uh, they just need to know exactly how to get from A to B to C. Once they do, I'm very confident they can complete that task. Uh, the clerk's office has been helpful. At, Overall, I, I want to think that have not been helpful. When we started the budget process, uh, we asked them to be involved, and you'll get an update. Our next agenda items, our budget, but it was really refreshing to see Jared and Jen working together and laughing. And you know, as I mentioned before, Jen has a very unique laugh, and she's not a quiet person. So when I could be in my office, hear them laughing, working together, that was a good sign. And as you know, during our budget process, they've been working together very well. And we're almost done. And actually yesterday, Jen, Jared, and I met, reviewed the next coming item, the budget, and we're very close to completing the budget. I think today we may be able to have our final budget meeting and have one more once all the books are changed, but we're very close. So there is working relationships between the uh, Jen and Jared. Uh, it has not been perfect. Uh, I probably could have, should have done this plan back in 
July. Looking back, it was a mistake on my part not to do this. I probably naively thought we can get through this with the staff that we had working together. Uh, there's a lot of history here. As you know, between the clerk's office and the treasurer, I'm not going to repeat all that. It was here before I got here. I did a survey when I came here my first three months. The survey results were uh, pretty revealing. I went public with those. You can look at the old oh, probably July 2012 meetings and see those survey results. Uh, the entire staff has been frustrated. I encourage them to come and view and express their views. My background is from an educational system where people don't have a problem speaking. <laughs> Let's just say that. Been a lot of staff meeting that uh, people go on and on and on. So I certainly am not opposed to any comments any staff made. I encourage them to come and speak. I did not tell anyone what to say or what not to say. I had no idea who's going to come speak. When Mr. Wessel called me about having a dialogue with the staff, I encouraged it. So yes, that's great. And uh, today, hoping will be done by one o'clock. I have sent an email to everyone that we're going to have a staff meeting. I, it's going to be a department head meeting, but I encourage any staff who wants to come because I want to inform them directly about the uh, new administrator, which I probably would have had a special meeting anyway, but also on this decision that you made here because we all have to go forward on one page and move on. No matter what everyone thinks, whatever decision you made, we have to unite and go forward because it's not fair for assuming it's Miss Allen to come in and have to deal with this. It really is not fair to new board members coming in to deal with this. This is a situation that we all created, and I say all of us, and we all need to come up with a solution to fix it before the end of this year, before I depart and before Ms. Allen comes in and before the new board comes in. So my plan has been endorsed by everyone, and I'm going to assume we're going forward it. It's not to be approved by the board. Uh, based on this decision, uh, Mr. Wessel called me last night and uh, asked me if I could come up with some plans. And it's basically what I started doing in July with the modification. In July, I was looking for an interim finance director. I believe now we need professional consultant. I did in July reach out to some CPA firms. I reached out to some individuals, asked if they could be the interim finance director. I can recontact those individuals, those firms, a couple of local units of government I talked to also, I'm not going to name them, to see if they'd be willing to provide consultation services to help Jared get the proper training he needs. Uh, Mr. Peacock said he has policies, procedures in place that he's willing to share with us. That's part of it, but they really do need training. And uh, depending on how, uh, since the motion failed, there is no other motion. Uh, the clerk is not willing to go forward without her conditions. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Gallagher's plan has no financial conditions, so there does not, to, there does not need to be uh, board approval. So I assume unless there's another motion made forward, I'm going to go forward and uh, meet with Mr. Gallagher. I'm going to ask the clerk to join us too, and if they want to participate in this plan, I don't want to speak on their behalf, but I will certainly reach out to them because they have been helpful. You know, I don't want anyone to think they, the last month or so forth, they have not tried to be helpful. And Mr. Prince, you would agree with that, right? Yeah. So it's not, it doesn't have to be us versus them, you know? And I think I mentioned this this summer one time. I'm a history buff, so I, uh, this spring when I was driving my mother's car back from Florida, my goal was always to stay off I-75. And I like to take side roads. So I ended up in uh, Appomattox in Virginia is where the Civil War ended. And that's where Lee and Grant met and had a very cordial and a very gracious settlement agreement that brought dignity to both parties. And there's a couple quotes there that really stuck out in my mind. The first one was from Abraham Lincoln in 1858 that said that a house divided cannot stand. And that's where we are now. We are a house divided. And he's right. We cannot stay on this. I think you heard from employees. I think there's complete agreement on the board that we're divided. We are a house divided. And we have to put an end to it. 
And then, on a positive note, at the end of the war, President Lincoln, President Grant, and General Lee, well, General Grant at that time, agreed to the saying that we need to appeal to the higher nature of our, to the angel nature of our, to the higher angels of our nature, I think is the term. And that's what I'm going to ask everyone to do. No matter how you feel about this, no matter how you vote on things, we need to stay united, take the high road, get this done, provide training. One thing uh, Jared brought out today, everyone's telling them they want them to be successful. And I heard that from the clerk's office. I heard it from everybody. I don't think anyone has told Jared they do not like him. Right, Jared? I think you're a pretty likable guy. My face. Yeah, <laughs> not this face. He is a Minnesota Vikings fan, so we had some concerns about that. But besides that, he does come sometimes to work on the Fridays with a Vikings shirt, so I did have a little talk with him about that. But I see he's wearing a suit. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. <laughs> he probably has a Viking shirt underneath it. But in all seriousness, I think everyone, including everyone in the clerk's office, wants him to be successful. Is that – have you heard that, Jared? Okay. And to the best of my knowledge, no one has told – the clerk staff, that they're not to work with them. Because I've heard that rumor. Mm -hmm. that, and if that's the case, then I didn't know who that person is because I have not heard that. I heard just the opposite. Everyone wants to work with them, mm -hmm. including the clerk's office. And they should be allowed to do it. So I will schedule a meeting Monday morning with the clerks, the treasurer, Mr. Prince, and how we're going to go forward. And the goals say we will have weekly meetings. And I'm going to start implementing that plan Monday morning. And I will reach out to the people I talked to this summer. Uh, because being a consultant is different than being an interim finance director. And there may be interest. Will there be some cost? Obviously, I'm guessing there will be. But I don't know what those are. I don't want to even speculate on what those are. But I can give you an update on where we are. So I think we just need to move forward. We are very close to getting our budget done for 2022. And once again, the critical part is the clerk's office, Jared, have worked together very well to get the budget done. So it's possible. You know, doing a budget is not an easy thing. <laughs> and so, so you look at the entire budget. I can't tell you how many times they have met, and we've had several budget meetings that have gone well, right? I mean, would you all agree? There's been no conflicts between the clerk's office and the finance director's office. They're on agreement. And I thought we had a great meeting yesterday morning on this topic, and you'll hear shortly how close we are to, to completing the 2022 budget. I'd like to suggest we have a, a motion of endorsement of uh, moving forward. And yeah. Melinda, you have one? I, I so move. Support. Any discussion? The motion is uh, endorse the plan that we've already been presented and encourage and support the administrator going forward uh, and making all the staff successful. All, right. all those in support of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Should we take a break before we, we should. do the budget? We should. Mm. You have unanimous support for moving forward. Thank you. I just want to know how it's doing. You ready? Oh. We are on item two of our budget, and uh, the administrator thinks we can be out of here about noon. Between noon and five. Oh, now you're changing the show? No, no, no. No. I just know that's contingent on the seven of you and how much you want to be. So, uh, first of all, uh, as I mentioned, Jerry and I and Jen, which we met yesterday, reviewed the budget, reviewed my memo with the issues we need to talk about. And I think we're pretty close. It, it was a very positive meeting. I want to yeah. publicly thank Jen for her support. I think you and Jen and Jared have worked together very well during this budget process. I can't remember how many budget meetings we've had, but there were less than last year, which is one of our goals, to try to streamline the process. We haven't that many unique uh, requests this year. Uh, I came here early this morning, got my update done. I took it shortly for the point of this. The sheriff was notified that his grant for the bolt was declined. So there's no, you don't have to worry about that matching part, which wasn't in the budget anyway, but if you did get it, you'd have to deal with that. So that's off the table. And so uh, you'll get more updates from me today. But. So we looked at uh, 
what issues we still need to talk about here that we haven't talked about it. And I guess uh, you can tell us how you wish to go forward. So items that, oh, thank you. So items that are in the budget, as you well know, are the extra MERS payments, the 3.25% increase in next year. Uh, that includes everybody but the deputies because we're in negotiations with them. And so once we have a contract, and I'm optimistic that we'll, we'll have to update that, but that's, that can happen at any time. And check the MERS amount? Is that 250,000? Thank you. And we'll do once again, every year around the December, November, November yep. sometimes we have more on top of that. So we have that plugged in there already, but you can always come out. And, and also then that's on top of is the 3% already? It is not. It's not in there yet. No, it's we will. What it was this year. But once you get your final budget, it will be. The uh, newly different. passed 3% yeah. will be. There is no need to dialogue on okay. that topic. We will okay. We're planning on in May updating all the salaries for everybody. Okay. And we also update the refugees. That gotcha. We, yeah. So, so we're in good shape. There. Okay. Uh, we did, based on discussion last time, put $50,000 for engineering fees for the HVAC. In fact, at the end of this meeting, and after our employee meeting, I'm meeting with the previous team that worked in this building to see what the proposal would be to update it. The good news is, from what Mr. Richard has told me verbally, I mean, he's not, that the plan they have probably has to be modified, but still he thinks the best option. And that plan does include using our current heat ducts and while we're piping and everything. But you'll get more on that. But mm -hmm. you did have 50000 in there. Well, we haven't put it in But yet. you will. And we, yeah. we will update that. We need to know kind of where that money is coming Yeah, we can take it from general or DTR. But we can talk to the treasurer. When we have our final book ready for you, we'll have that resolved. But we will have 50000 in there somewhere. Uh, we did include the motor vehicle. Uh, updates, the uh, request for the building safety, the web page design. I'm just not going to go the whole thing, but uh, everything that has been talked about either has been or will be updated. A couple of issues we still need to have discussion on, and I guess you can tell us how to proceed. Uh, Monday, Mr. Russell and I went to the Tri County Judicial Committee, and they would actually be at our meeting in November to uh, update our three county agreement. Some minor changes in the agreement, but they have proposed adding uh, 1.2 staff people. I believe, Jared, you sent out the job description to everyone uh, a couple of weeks ago. The question that we have for you is, do you want, it's a half-time compliance, or it's a full-time compliance officer and a two-tenths sobriety, uh, or, uh, here. So it's a uh, compliance officer, a new one there, and then um, I think it's a point point two probation officer to go from point eight to level. Which is a, in the sobriety court. Our agreement is uh, we pick up 11%, uh, Antrim is 18%, and the rest of the cost of our grant charge fund. So the question is, so we put in a budget, do you want them to present this to the full board and another bunch of meetings, or do you want them to be presented at the uh, record November meeting? It has been approved by grant charters and the actual county plus already. And when I'm looking at it, it looks like it'll be about $8,200. That was my question, what our That's exposure right. was. Okay, and so you heard, uh, in your opinion, is it, uh, you heard their reasons for, yeah. It makes sense. It's yeah, not, and it's just really cool. Donald Hammer will be here next month, and I believe two of the judges will be here next month to give you more details. But it made sense. And Donald Hammer, they actually reduced the request a couple years ago. Okay. Yeah, there's your Charles yeah. Dawkins came and they reduced staff. Okay. So if you look, it's more than last year, but below where they were prior to that reduction. Mm -hmm. They're short staff, so I can tell you that. The November two day meeting, or? Well, if you want to, we'll just put it in the budget. You've moved everything to November, so I'm embracing for two days. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, you have a busy November <laughs> night meeting. But for now, uh, I'm assuming there's support to put it in a budget. Mm -hmm. Yes, for yes. Yes. We would say yeah. for yeah. now, yeah. They're coming in November anyway because they're up there, yeah. so I don't okay. think we need to. No. Clarify for me, you said a compliance officer. Uh, 
meaning a probation officer? Uh, as I understand, a compliance. Uh, it's um, a step below a uh, probation officer. Oh, okay. But to make sure people are in compliance with the court orders. Is that the way you understand? Yes. If the judge doesn't put somebody like on probation but says there are things that they need to be, yeah. they would be looking at that. I just wanted the distinction yeah. because. Um, I'll meet with him on Tuesday. Oh, okay. So you'll hear more. Yeah. About it. Yeah, and so we'll put that in the budget. Uh, issues we have not talked about, one we can talk about today or whatever, is the Senior Services Director Pay. Uh, Commissioner Gallagher asked for that to be. We have some background information. Uh, you tabled a discussion on the Drain Commissioner Pay. And Darcy, I'll be. I don't know if she's had, we have some information on the senior service staff. I don't know if we can ask her if she has time yet to do the drain commissioner thing. On um, the HVAC, you put that on the November agenda. Can I ask a question? The drain commissioner, wasn't there a $3,000 increase on that just in the budget? Wasn't, didn't he, wasn't there an increase already? Oh, he, he was asking for that much. He was more. asking for it. The question is, do you want to approve it or not? And I thought we said in discussion, well, it's already in the budget, so. No, well, it's in the proposed budget. You have to say yes or no. He has requested okay. it. So we're going to discuss that. Well, these are issues you need to discuss, yes. okay? Yes. Uh, the HVAC is, is far the biggest one, but you're not going to get much done in 2023. I think the best thing, and you have already told us to put $50,000 for fees. Let's get a plan together. Let's see where we are. And uh, I've asked Mr. Richards to come up with a cost to update the plan. But for now, I think we're good on that topic. We will have a discussion in November on the healthy parking and work options. Um, there was a request. I don't think you have talked about it. It's not in the budget. Is the DAB authority request for $66,600? For? Uh, a variety of things. And I missed one meeting, but I don't think it was on your agenda. I don't think we would discuss that. Yeah. I don't think so. And what page is that on, Joe? Uh, so some upgrades and some. 86 equipment. or 56? 56. 66. Was it under special? There are a lot of things to discuss here. 156. Why are you sure to want to freeze over these? There's one for you with the other buses. Yeah, I mean, uh, walkway with the roof of the coal room over there. 66,000 in total. Um, the walkway is deteriorating, becoming a safety issue. Uh, the roof has a leak that is persistent because the roof has an uneven step that holds water. And I think when we talked about that, we wasn't that on the list of the insurance uh, or uh, safety issue? Yes, oh, with OSHA came here, they did not cite us for it, okay. but they brought up as a concern. And and wasn't it part of the, they had the 10 year plan of expenditures? Yes, that was. And that part was part of, of that. And I believe it's in the capital plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. I guess the question is do you want to include a budget? If you will. Yeah. If you don't, or you want them to come in and explain. I think since it's an OSHA issue, let's include it. They are. And as you remember, especially the roof, we've been talking about this for quite a few years. We kept pushing it back, pushing it back, pushing yeah. it back. Yeah. I would, so let's, let's we do it. We would have to go out, before you spend any of that money, we'd go out with the bids, and you'd have to prove it anyway. Yeah. I would say include it. Yeah. So, all right. Mm -hmm. we, uh, Chet, yeah. pardon me. Um, has an engineer looked at that? Is is it can it be replaced or pardon? can it be replaced or only repaired? Because this is walkway? no, I'm talking about the roof. Okay, okay. I don't. He's know. guessing twenty thousand. That's just so for just repair. A, yes. Jerry got just a couple rough quotes. That's what okay, okay, but has an engineer looked at it? I don't. I don't believe so. Hmm. so. Is that something? Do we own that roof, or is that under the code? I believe that's our roof, as I understand. Our roof? It's yeah. uh, what the damn authority members told me. And the Cove's wall or something? Isn't there some joint? 
Yeah. The, the dam is partially let go and then partially has a yeah. 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 well, right. I've been told that's our roof. Yeah, it's a 50-50, but I believe it is the county's part of the dam. The party's looking to fix the roof. So and I think roof. we need to to let let's do the best thing for that. Well, if, what we if would do, like suggest, unless you have no special meeting, we put it in the budget. If the goals are finished, yeah. you're going to have to approve it anyway. Right. So it's not committing you to anything other than just moving the budget process along. At least once we get the professional estimate, RP, get bids, at that time you can decide whether to go forward or not. And if I, re I was at the meeting where all of those things were discussed and put in the 10 year mm -hmm. plan, mm -hmm. and if I remember right, it was based on some engineer taking a look and yeah. giving, you know, but it was a rough estimate at the yeah. time. That was a walkway. Now that but. you mentioned it, I think Jerry did have the jury just mm -hmm. not come up with a firm yeah. plan. Yeah. But if you if you've never been to the dam, and some of you may have not, it's really <laughs> worth Jerry and I would be glad to show you the yeah. facilities. One of our new commissioners orientation, we took a bus ride and went to the dam. Some of you were there. And it, it is quite fascinating how that works. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the roof, you'll agree it needs to be replaced. It does. So I think Everyone's saying mm -hmm. for now put it in the budget. So, put it yeah. in the budget and we'll just mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> another issue we haven't talked about and it's time maybe we should. Uh, the spending limit that the department has elected officials has since the late nineties, anything over two thousand has to go to the board of commissioners. So I think you spend a lot of time, but I checked in Northern Central Michigan, as far as I know, we are by far the lowest copy. The amount that mm -hmm. the department heads and the elected officials have to spend. And we're in the best shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm saying, I just we want to point that out. Yeah, we talked it off and for a couple years about raising that. It's up to you. It doesn't impact the budget, but it impacts the budget rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a, any sense of, of what other counties have as their limit? It varies from 5,000 to, I believe, Grand Traverse County is 100,000. <laughs> the hundred thousand is what the administration is now up for. Yeah, yeah. But for department heads, I think five is the second lowest. I it was just a, it, I I asked a question during a, one of our administrators' meetings. Uh, five to ten thousand seems to be the average there. We've been at two since I believe the late nineties. Since so, that money is already, I'm so sorry. Since the money has already been budgeted, it would make sense to raise the amount that they can do it and save some of this coming to the board unnecessarily. The amount, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how much. Our big requirements no, no, you're just talking about mm -hmm. raising how much. Yeah. Okay. Deb? So I'm not opposed to raising it slightly. However, um, what's the threshold for like capital improvement um, items? Or items that we have to. Uh, well, I mean, if it's over five thousand, then we don't need you guys anyway. Okay, so that's the that's the benchmark. It's five thousand. Five thousand. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And anything over five thousand, unless the board really <clears throat> good requirements has to go. Well, the thing I was concerned with is a department head may not recognize that certain items are depreciated. And therefore, just purchase and not, uh, you know, it doesn't go through the right process, I guess. Yeah, unfortunately, I think we have uh, very good department heads. I can't remember outside of Mr. Coleman sometimes, who <laughs> sometimes just has to make a decision and thinks great, but it was called. But I can't remember any department head that has not followed the procedures. No. Yeah. All the time I've been here, they yeah. I, I think they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty As you know, good. every year, our department heads do not even spend their allocated lines, right. right? Which is a good problem to have. Mm -hmm. Melinda, they speed up things if we raise that amount. Like I said, it's been, I think I was told, 98 was the last time. So, so I'll make prices the, have changed a little bit since 1990. I'll make the recommendation that we increase um, the spending limit to 5,000. Second that. I even noticed that. In the okay. procedures manual. Let Melinda start what? out because I had called on her call before. Oh, yeah. Currently, it's 2,000 per department heads. I can authorize under up to 5,000 under circumstances. And if there's an emergency situation, the mm -hmm. can authorize any amount. 
we had to do it a couple times with yeah. the sewer system and so forth, but I always would inform the board chairman first and I go to all of you know. I think two times I have to make a quick decision on something that you can't wait a lot. But really it's been pretty rare. So right now it's two and five as a standard procedure. So if you raise that for five in the department, you probably should raise that and we should think of ten thousand. So okay. we have. So thank you. Yeah, that was one of my one of my questions. We should look That's at both right. levels. And I'm not opposed. I was thinking slightly. Is three thousand slight? Maybe I. I guess the point I want to the the point I want to make is that what it does do is make sure that as we do purchase stuff, we, we are following all the right processes mm -hmm. and all the policies. Yeah. It, it brings it to the attention of. Yeah, that would not change. Us. You still would get all the. Right, for anything now over five, though. So, you know, in and the other thing it does by those coming in front of us is it's a constant reminder. We look at it at budget in the fall, and then it's we don't think about it again. And we're not looking at every individual thing budgeted. No, the checks and balances, it has to be in their budget. So, let's just say uh, Leanna comes up with some technology need that. Let's just use the life for example. If it's not in her budget, she would still have to come to the board and ask you for the right. extra funding. But if it's in your budget, she would not have to come to the board and ask for it. So we'll we'll miss, you know, so it's on a small level, and as you said, prices have gone up well, astronomically you know, since then. Well, the process a little. And it will. Because sometimes departments have to wait until the next mm -hmm. budget right. or the next board meeting. So if something that they need on a Wednesday after the regular meeting, in theory, you have to wait a whole nother month. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What's just happened? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I guess. Five and ten. So, I would amend that motion to include a ten thousand. This is a budget meeting, so you don't need to. Yeah. I mean, you can't you just need to put it in motion. there. We had a motion. Yeah, but I'm saying you don't have to do it. This is just a motion. I just said I would make that recommendation. Yeah. I don't believe that I said it was a motion. Well, right. Right. well maybe I'm not hearing well down because here. Why don't we? Why don't we also? Do the um, increase the administrator to ten That's while we're at it. What well, I think we're talking about yeah. doing so consensus. five and ten. Mm -hmm. That change was made in the budget rule, so it's obviously it's not a budget. Right. Right. In the budget rule, when you adopt the budget, you also adopt the budget rules. So we'll make that change. And Chad, Ed, Ed, since you have been the administrator and a good one all this time and fiscally responsible, is that is that? Is five and ten sufficient, or do you think it yes. should be more? No, no, I, I think that. Okay, thank you. The under sheriff has a uh, question. Does that still remain for item not for invoice? That's how it's written now. Like if, if I need yeah. you know, twenty things for twenty deputies, it's not. I mean, I could spend thirty-nine thousand on um, item one hundred two grand on those type of issues. Usually, especially in the sheriff's department. I would sit down with Under Sheriff Morgan and I would sign off. I mean, sometimes, like, uh, the one I think of was those body cams. Correct. They were like $800 a piece. We would say per item, mm -hmm. not per invoice. Yeah. But we would routinely spend $7,000, mm -hmm. but it's for 20 things. Mm -hmm. so but it had to be in the budget. Yeah. So in you're always going to you're always going to have those types of things. Right. That, Hopefully the administrator and the elected official department can come up with a conclusion. And you're going to see the bill, so if you have questions, you yeah. have the right to Some deal. Some we buy a $5,000 okay. item, I'll be going to spend $5,000 on 20 items. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Uh, so, uh, items. in terms of what Jared needs to do to go forward, I think uh, the only thing I think I'm seeing now that I haven't, that we haven't talked about is the two salary requests from, well, the drain commissioner request is from drain commissioner, and it's in your budget package. The senior services director page, what we talked about last year, uh, did not come up with a conclusion on that. Well, we actually did adjust it for this position because of some irregularity, but this is a request from a commissioner to have a discussion on the senior services pay director. Uh, is there anything else that's missing? Yeah, we can have that discussion internally. So the next step would be, and I'm being optimistic here, I'm meeting with Ms. Allen this afternoon 
and hopefully we can come up to a quick contract term. But I will then have her meet with our chairman and vice chair uh, to hopefully agree with that. And then in the near future, we can have a special meeting to a review the final version of the budget, not approve it, because that will happen probably in the summer after season. But review it. And then also there's a request from the under sheriff of cars, which we can have a special meeting. I'm optimistic that Ms. Allen and the chair and vice chair can agree on contract terms. And Jared will need some time. I'm sure Jen will be helpful. Oh, and so we go. We'll put together the revised package along with the revised budget rules with those changes. And they've had one special meeting because we need to approve the contract. Because Ms. Allen, in her contract, has a 30 day clause that she has to abide by if she gives notice. And obviously, she's not going to give notice until she has a approved contract here. So, there's this, I'd like to get that resolved. And I'm hopeful that, uh, probably not next week, my goal would be we can have a special meeting the first week of November and give you the final version of the budget, have an approved contract with the new administrator and issue. And they'll be able to keep up. That's my goal, anyway. I think we can do it. Jeremy, anything that? No, I don't think that these uh, changes will take us very long. So, yeah, I don't know what you're doing. Thank you. 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 And uh, she would have been here today, but it's her husband's birthday, and they're doing that point walk, the new yeah. bridge walkway. Yeah. And that's what Sky you want to do. Skywalk. Yes. Skywalk. Skywalk. <coughs> that's what you want to do for his 50th birthday. Oh, awesome. Good for them. So that's why she's not here. Good for them. I guess her husband's birthday takes priority over this one. Yeah. We fully endorsed her. So I guess we'll start with the drink commissioner. He is requesting three thousand dollars. Would you like him to come? And Darcy's still doing research. She simply just had not had time to research it. Or you want to spend the budget, or what would you like? To could we could we put those two salary adjustments on the same meeting that we have the contract for the uh, new administrator, and then we can get our our our, our data together. That's, that's fine. So. That's what I want. I want some data. So oh. you'll get to Chad, you'll get to you'll get yeah. us comparables. We have them actually. We have some. I okay. Literally got the uh, yesterday. And there's a little difference in yeah. like the drain commissioner has mandated and, yes. and non mandated. Right. So are we going to look at that? Like so in other words, there's an increase in hours, but is it it's not mandated so that's Between, a consideration uh, Darcy and April they have compared the salary here to one two three four five six seven eight nine counties and uh with the military trades so anyway we can email this to you okay. so mm -hmm. i, I kind of like that idea mm -hmm. assuming we have a special meeting okay so and i wanted that there to be a comparison with department heads here as well, not just senior services. And how do you suppose that we do that? We have. How do you compare? We have, I mean, we have a chart yeah, with all the department heads. Yeah, today. we've got that. So perhaps their budget, their employees. Their, I, there has to be. There are some comparisons. Okay, I guess let's know what exactly you mean because this is. I'm not sure all of you are in agreement here. So we let me tell you what we have. Okay. We have the salaries of all our department heads. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. April and Darcy work together, have the com salary comparison of, I think, 10 counties, uh, the number of years that person has been in their job, and what the millage rates, what the budgets are for those okay. senior services. Commission on aging, we're the only one that has senior, senior services. services. So we're still the only term commission on aging. Okay. The problem is I don't accept the fact that um, it sure seems like people within our own county, in our own building, should be, be as a department head, there should be more comparable pay. Okay, so what, what because that's a historic 
field where people have been underpaid, and that doesn't mean it's appropriate. So, so maybe I think picking up on what you're suggesting, maybe uh, employees supervised, size of budget, uh, whether or not they. You talk about internal. In, no. Yeah, internal. Okay. Yeah. Well, in, just so when I give this to Darcy and right. April, no, I'm speaking to internal department okay. directors, comparing size of budgets. A uh, number of employees that are supervised by each department head, whether or not they their budget comes directly from the, the our our fund, or do they have to bring in additional funds and grants to support their effort, uh, the education required for that particular position. Yes, thank you. That's really important, and I think we need to look at the starting salary for that well, that's, that, that department as well. I, and, that, and that's way, way, way too long. I can tell you your educational requirements are pretty minimal for a certain job here. They say, some say, years of experience or a bachelor's degree. So but I think senior services doesn't say master's preferred or didn't it when I we, think, I, I, don't, I think I don't bachelor's think, or master's preferred, something like that. Yeah. Melinda? I think, I think we have to caution ourselves because if you go that route and you act on it, if you go that route and act on a salary based on those conditions, mm -hmm. our sheriff's in for a heck of a raise. And he's probably fine with it. But if we want to go down that route, we just I, ca I caution us to do that. I think there's other departments where department heads and elected officials may also be in for a heck of a raise. Mm -hmm. I think we need to look at your, your 10 county uh, mm -hmm. um, that we Comparison. <laughs> and though, <laughs> when you look at the starting salary for that department, the department has changed in 10 years. It has grown. That starting salary was for a very different job than it is now. And I see no reason to bring it. That may be a different to argument. To reflect the That's current job. That's a different job. argument. Mr. Wilson said we have a discussion at the next meeting. I think we need to yeah. talk about it. All I ask is what information do you want? Yeah. So we can, I want what you've got in your I, I want to make sure we all are on the same page because this will create extra work for Darcy and mostly for Darcy. So I want to make sure we know exactly what you're asking for. So what we have now, you have the list you have. This is the pay of all your department heads. So that. I have a sheet that I think Darcy and April put together, the 10 counties, what the salary are, what their steps there, uh, years of service of those directors, what their steps are not steps, and what their millage is, because most of them are on a sheet. So we have all that. We have those numbers. And can you get that in package? Can you get that in package too, not just salary? What is the package for those 10 counties? Because, well, we got retirement. We've got, as I said, a heck of a health health care yeah. I'm saying that's going to be a lot of extra work. Yeah, I understand so that. I just, we so, want to make sure I know exactly what you're asking, mostly Darcy. At least some, some gist. I don't know what, every county is different retirement, every county is different health insurance. So it'd be really hard to. Yeah, sign to Maybe we we'll just look at that. I mean, package. if someone calls us and asks us what we have for health care, we'll call Blue Cross Blue Shield. Well, you can tell them no cost. Yeah, that, that. I guess I, I don't need the figures, but because I want to do move on, but where do we fit in the 10 counties? Well, you want to, the yeah. no. no, not not the numbers, just where do we fall in between the, 10 counties? Are we at the bottom? Are we in the middle? No, we're not at the bottom. Uh, just look at it. Yeah, we're in the I would say, well, here, the average of the 10 counties, and this is from April, the average salary. $64,699. Our current pay for our central director is $64,047. So based on this, about $500 below the average. Okay. But the counties, this does include also Grand Charters County, which ironically is the biggest, obviously, and their pay is lower than ours. Ours is 59229 could could we could we deal with this at the I mean if we if we keep talking about it now we might not deal with it. Okay. Now. Yeah. You make some notes. Yeah, I got it. So yeah. we'll keep so, Darcy busy to our next. Yeah. Okay. So one final thing: if you look at the starting salary for that 
job, it's fifty two thousand dollars. Yeah. Which is ten to thirteen thousand less than anyone else. Well, I think, I think we're gonna be patient here. I mean that's why we got we got an HR department and they're yeah. gonna sort this that out. Yeah. Yeah. You know Thank what? You Maybe you. Just I, a, 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 a I think you're looking at an old chart. The starting pay right now is fifty six thousand thirty six dollars. I'd like the new one then. Oh, I'd love the new one. Yeah, we're going to get that? I, everything I have, you'll get by the end of the day. Okay. 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 As well as the job description. Some of the last What else, Chet? Uh, this is something I don't have in writing yet, but the, uh, the judge contacted me, and uh, when the clerk made the when the clerk contacted the legal counsel about the pay of the chief deputy clerk and what legal they were entitled, then we had to make adjustments for the second in command of all elected officials, including the under sheriff. <coughs> the judge claimed that her registrar was under the same legal authority, and therefore she brought a new registrar in, that that person was entitled to the same pay as the previous registrar. And that we should not have steps. It should be exactly what the previous person was paid based on the legal opinion we received, and that we should modify our pay to reflect that. Uh, I asked for a legal opinion because the registrar cannot be a judge in the event of judge's office. But uh, yesterday we had a discussion with Donnie Kosky from the law firm. They're doing the research, they'll issue us a written legal opinion, but it appears that by law, the registrar has to treat the same as the second in command of all other elected officials. So, therefore, our This is uh, Judge Kromkowski? Yes. So, her registrar, Chris Mathis, is entitled from 2019 for back pay at the same rate that the previous registrar was getting. Okay. She is considered by law second in command by state statute, even though she cannot take, she's not a judge, she cannot take those jobs, but by state statute, and we will get those state statutes in a legal opinion that she is entitled to pay at the same level as the previous registrar, we should not have steps, and she's entitled to back pay just like the other sheriff was. And our deputy clerk. <clears throat> Anybody else? Uh, no, because we address all the elected okay. officials. Every other elected official. So you'll get an opinion. Yeah, so I just let you know this was verbally yesterday. It was pretty black and white. Okay. So the judge did her research first. I checked it on. We called Stoker and Kosky. They reviewed it. And verbally, they said that they agreed with the judge's opinion. Okay. And the court case said that she's excited. And you'll get all that information shortly. So at some point we got to do that adjustment, but I want you to have a legal opinion first. Okay. So if everyone's comfortable, Mr. Prince will work on revising the final budget. And I'm saying we do this in December, that we said we would. So we have a better timeline. Uh, as you know, by law, as long as we have approved budget by end of the year, we're in full compliance. So there's no issues there. We will schedule a public hearing by the December meeting. We'll publish the ads as we always have done. Uh, we seldom have anyone in our public hearing, but we'll, we'll follow the legal process. And in November, at some point, once we have a contract with Ms. Allen, um, Jerry will take the bucks and we'll have another special meeting. Not to approve the budget, just for you to review it one last time. Make sense? I don't have a date yet to get that okay. And that will hopefully fall on the tier we trust. Amen. Sooner better for all of us. Yeah. So we'll, I'm sure we'll have it before the November report. Any uh, questions of Chet or Jared? Thank you very much. Thank you. We are uh, now at that uh, part of our agenda, Mr. Mikowski, when we have public comment. <laughs> it's yours. 
it hot? It's very hot. It's, hot. it's cooler than it was this morning. It's water cooler than cool. <laughs> You're the engineer, in fact. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I always want to express on what I'm sure you do also is that we probably don't try to understand the way how the government functions. We have various positions, like the current prosecutor and the sheriff, that are elected. And they're sort of autonomous. Organizations and even maybe even called kingdoms. And I think it's a difficult concept to understand. And that's why there have been difficulties in working with it. All these elected positions have statutory duties and any other duties assigned to them by the commissioners or other law authority. And I think maybe that's a concept for the employees. It's a tough one too. It's, it's a tough one to understand. It seems odd and peculiar. As to the taxpayers, no doubt they pay for everything. The money always keeps them shoving in, and they will always spend it every day. No doubt. One point that would have been retrospect. The most critical thing in uh, our discussion about the finance and the resources is that the most critical thing that was the liberty committed in the process of all that today on was that the clerk and the administrator were clearly left out of the process. To me, that's a breach of faith and trust. And if I had been a minister at that time, I would offer my resignation. That would have gotten all of you thinking very hard of what we were trying to initiate. This is a process out of issue. From the beginning. Once something starts from the beginning bad, it's going to look bad all the way. And that's where we are at today. Therefore, there's one more piece of business we need to do today. Ask the administrator to prepare an apology to the clerk and the tax I can assure you that there are very positive results. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Any other public comment? Any commissioner comment? Mr. Robbins? Thank you. First, I want to start off. Uh, it's been a long, very emotional time since May 21 of or May 11th of 21. Um, it's divided us, um, but I think today we came together. I first want to um, say, uh, Chairman Wessel, what you did was uh, um, right up there. Um, you showed a lot of integrity in the last 48 hours, and I'm proud that I sat on this board with you. The next thing I want to say is, Gwen, our motions did get high. And I am going to give you an apology for what happened out here the other day. Motions were high. Hopefully we can move on from that and uh, do what's best for the taxpayers. Thank, Thank you. you, Rick. Any other commissioner comments? Trisha? Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm glad we've reached a point and moved forward. Yeah, it's, I had a number of people approach me during the break and say something to the effect of, um, everything have, that's happened prior to today is water under the bridge. And it made me smile, and I appreciated people reaching out that they were concerned that I wasn't going to take it that way. Um, I do support passionately, as you all know, issues that I feel are the best action for the county. 
However, once a decision is made, I am a team player. Even if the outcome was contrary to what I was advocating for. So I, I, I did, you know, with today and everyone speaking, it, it took me back to when I started my tenure here. And what I did was visit all the departments and the staff that were present at the time. And I asked them about their needs and their concerns. While I might not have used this forum as the t point to have our, our chairman, our, our employees meet with our chairperson, I do feel strongly that we continue to hear our employees' voices going forward and that they be encouraged to express their concerns and their need, but that they are allowed to do that in a safe environment so that they know they can come forward without recrimination and, and give us their thoughts. So thanks, everybody, for passionately expressing your opinions today, and I'm looking forward to moving on. Any other commissioner comments? Motion. Yes. Commissioner Lutner. I just, we've, we've heard, it was rumored, or mentioned today, there's been lots of rumors, and, and we've heard lots of numbers thrown out um, of what, of the cost of, the two um, new departments, and I've been through the budget, and what I come up with is 176,000, and that includes the salaries and the um, and the Blue Cross insurance. Um, so I mean that's where I'm at. So um, I I just I mean if it's different, I'd like to know. We've heard some outrageous numbers, and I'd like to know what I've missed. But that's what I see the cost is. And I want to say I don't take that lightly. It's it's um, it's an important thing for us to know. So thank you. Can you get, can you get that, Jared? Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Move to adjourn. You're adjourned. <laughs>